So if you're starting uni in September, you might be a little bit uh, unsure about what sort of stuff you need to take. So uh, I'm going to talk to you today about the sort of things I took and sort of give you a list of, uh, of what you need to take to uni with you. Um, a lot of people either bring too much or not enough. So uh, hopefully if you bring everything on this list, you should be fine and not have too many things. So let's get started with what you should bring for the kitchen. Um, uh, now just before we start, this is probably a good time to, um, if you know who you're living with next year, to contact um, contact them because a lot of you will all be buying exactly the same things so if you can cut down on things you need to buy and agree to share things and uh, sort of chip in uh, with each other um, you'll end up saving a lot of money and you won't, you'll won't. you have a lot more space because storage in kitchens, especially where I was, was uh, quite limited. So. Um, we're going to yeah start off with kitchen. So the first things you need to bring with you are obviously your crockery. So um, for this, this is a great a great example of how you can um, how you can split things with your uh, flatmates. So a lot of the time, crockery comes in sort of uh, like a dinner set for four. Um, so you'll get like four plates, uh, four bowls, four little plates, um, and you're not going to need all that, and you don't have space to store it, and it's too much washing up. So um, I'd see if you can uh, buy one set and then split it between two people. Um, and then obviously you've saved half and you've not got a load of extra crockery left over. And you can do this with cutlery as well. So with cutlery you need obviously two sets of knives, forks, spoons and teaspoons as well. So I got all of my stuff either off Amazon or from Wilkinson's. I think most of my kitchen stuff was from Wilkinson's anyway. A lot of the stuff there is pretty cheap and uh, it's actually quite good quality as well. So I got all of my crockery and uh, knives and forks there. So that's for eating your food. Obviously we need to start thinking about cooking food as well. So you're going to need some kitchen knives. So these are the kitchen knives that I took to uni. Um, I got these for my 18th birthday, it's a bit strange but I like cooking. Um, but you don't need this many, you just need three. So let's set this down, yeah, you just need three. So you need a serrated knife like this one. So you can use this for like cutting meat um, if you have a roast or something or bread. Uh, yeah, serrated knife. A, quite a large knife like this, sort of a heavy duty one that's got a good amount of weight to it. Um, that You're going to be using this most often if you're cooking. And also a small preparing knife like this, um, just for like, I used to use this for chopping garlic and like carrots and that sort of thing. Obviously if you have knives you need a chopping board, so, so yeah, I got a pack of four uh, colour coded knives like this. Yeah chopping board sorry and obviously use one for meat, one for veg, one for cooked stuff and one for uh, fish. Um, to be honest with you you only really need one um, and if you have four it encourages you to leave the dirty ones in the sink so I just get one uh, and then wash it up each time you want to use it. And then I'd also recommend getting a uh, peeler and a cheese grater and what else have I got on the list? Oh yeah, and a bottle slash tin opener. Um, a lot of people forget tin openers, so yeah, uh, make sure you don't forget that one. Okay, so now we need some sort of utensils, so we're gonna go for a spatula, a wooden spoon, and some little tongs like this. So, a spatula, a wooden spoon, and some little tongs. I use these for everything. Um, you could probably just get away with the tongs to be honest, they do literally everything you could want them to. So frying pan and saucepan, so a lot of people will buy a set of frying pans, saucepans, that sort of thing, and will only ever end up using two, so they'll use a frying pan with a lid and a saucepan with a lid. And um, So you might as well just get two good quality ones rather than getting like five or six like rubbishy ones, um, and you, again you can get this from anywhere. Um, but I would say with um, frying pans and saucepans, you need to look for a nice heavy base on it um, and also non-stick and make sure they've got a lid. Um, this way they'll last a lot longer and they're a lot more versatile as well. So I'll link all, the, all of the things I recommend down below um, just so you can have a look and see which things sort of suit you. Um, they're not going to be like super expensive things, they're just the things that I think 
are a good sort of balance between uh, price and quality. So next we need um, sieve, scales, uh, mixing bowl and a jug. Um, obviously which, which ones you get will depend on what sort of things you're cooking. So if you're doing a lot of baking then you might want to get a really big mixing bowl. Um, I just got the cheapest ones I could find in whatever shop I was in at the time. I think it was Wilkinson's again. Um, I think I think my jug was like a quid or something. But yeah, just get the cheapest ones you can find. So a lot of the cooking you're going to be doing at uni is going to be in the oven just because it's easy. Um, so you need a baking tray or like a roasting tray or something. And then like a, a deep sided dish that you can cook like lasagna and a load of other stuff in. They're really versatile so you need those two things. And if you want to be baking cakes, a cake tin. So the last little things are things that everyone always forgets. So oven gloves, tea towel and cloths. So cloths for like wiping wiping the surface down and that sort of thing. Oven gloves, tea towel, self-explanatory. Um, you really want your own tea towel because tea towels in shared kitchens get pretty gross um, so you don't want to be using other people's tea towels. It's just unhygienic. Um, on that subject of hygiene, uh, remember to bring some kitchen cleaning products, especially in light of like um, the whole COVID thing. Um, you want to be keeping the place nice and clean. And the last two things on the list are lunchbox. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm I wasn't going to go and spend like four or five pound a day on lunch every day, so um, took my own lunch in a lunchbox. And the last thing is some storage boxes for the fridge. Um, a lot of people use freezer bags, but I'm not about that life. It's like way too much plastic. Um, so you might as well just use get some reusable um, boxes for the fridge that you can wash out each time um, to keep your food nice and fresh. Right, so next room. Uh, next room we're going to do is bathroom. So for the bathroom, you need two large towels, a bath mat, two hand towels, yeah, some cleaning products for the bathroom, um, maybe a little shower caddy, it depends on where you're staying and some some uh, accommodations have them built in and if you've got a shared bathroom you might not want this. And a little organiser that you can put all of your little bits in. Um, this is, one sec, I'll get mine. So this is the one I, I had, uh, it's a bit wet because it's in the, been in the bathroom and I've just washed it. Um, it's got, yeah, you can see there. You can keep your stuff nice and organised and the the big deal with this is that um, your accommodation will be cleaned, well your accommodation will probably be cleaned by a cleaner once or twice a week and it's not fair on them and sometimes they won't even clean your bathroom if uh, there's stuff just littered everywhere. Uh, so before they come in you need to take everything out and make sure it's sort of respectable and your stuff isn't everywhere and with one of these all of your stuff is in this little pot so on the morning um, where your room is due to, due to be cleaned you can just pick this up and take it out of the uh, out of the bathroom and it's a lot quicker a lot easier and a lot less mess so the next room is bedroom so so this is a pretty short list and it's almost it's all self-explanatory really um, so you need really need two sets of like bed linen so like duvet cover pillowcases and a top sheet. That's because you don't want to be washing all the time. The the laundrettes at uh, uni are often really expensive. I think it was it was like five pounds for a wash and a dry um, yeah, with circuit laundry at UEA which is like not going to pay that every week. So if you've got two sets it just means you don't have to go to do laundry all the time. So then you need a duvet I take two I take two pillows um, took a blanket as well because Sometimes it can get cold and it's quite nice just to have a blanket if you're just sitting watching telly or something with some friends in there. And then for the bed, um, it depends on where you are and how comfy the mattresses are in your accommodation. But um, at UEA I found that they were okay but not brilliant. Uh, so a mattress topper and mattress like cover slash protector um, will help your mattress feel a lot more comfortable and you'll sleep a lot better. They're not too expensive, I think they're like between like 20 and 30 pounds which is which is definitely worth it for a good night's sleep. This next, These next two things are things that people often forget as well so uh, an extension lead or like a, a power strip like like this thing got loads of plugs and stuff on it but something like that yeah something like something like that 
and uh, just to make sure you've got everywhere to plug things in because uh, in my room there were four plug sockets and that wasn't really enough for all the, all the stuff I wanted to plug in and a linen basket um, that's pretty self-explanatory and the last two things are obviously completely optional but um, cushions make your room feel a lot more homely and comforting and um, a lot nicer just to sort of chill out in when you're not sleeping and get yourself plenty of sort of lamps and lights and stuff everywhere because the lights in the room uh, probably won't be very good and it won't be very easy to study in your room because the light won't be very good and it just won't feel very nice and lamps can go a long way um, into making your room feel a lot more like home. So now moving on to clothing, so I'd probably recommend that you have enough casual clothing for two weeks without having to wash and then to go with that, that the sort of clothes you're going to wear every day, um, just one pair of really comfy shoes. Um, I have, I bought a pair of um, Adidas Ultra Boost All Terrain so they're like kind of water resistant and they serve me really well. They're super, super comfy, comfy. They've lasted really well. I wore them every single day of uni. Um, so there's no point in going and buying lots of cheaper pairs of shoes to wear every day. Just get yourself one good comfy pair because the chances are you're going to be doing a lot of walking. Then you're probably going to need some like gym or exercise clothes. So like sports top, shorts, and along with that, a pair of trainers that you can do exercise in. Even if you don't really exercise before you go to uni, you might find yourself wanting to join like um, sports clubs and societies and you don't want the fact that you haven't got any uh, sporty clothes with you to hold you back and stop you joining. Next we need some clothes to go out in, like out out. Um, I know this isn't really happening at the moment with Covid but it probably will do one day. Uh, I don't know how in the near future but just keep that in mind. Um, and these need to be fairly cheap um, because you don't want expensive clothes to be like tatted up. Um, but yeah, that's up to you. And to go with that, a pair of shoes that you really don't mind getting tatted up because floors of clubs are disgusting. I'd recommend getting a black pair like this. So I had a black pair. These were mine. They're just a pair of like fairly cheap trainers. Um, no one really cares what you wear on your feet as long as it's reasonably comfy and not going to look disgusting after like five minutes, then you're fine. Uh, next thing is formal wear. So this is optional. I didn't take anything formal until start of December when uh, all the like society started having like their Christmas dinners like the Christmas formal meals um, but some might have them early on again this is up to you the last piece of sort of general clothing is specific to um, like people doing medicine and that sort of thing so um, you need some placement clothes um, these need to be like relatively smart um, and make sure you can get them so they're uh, bare below the elbows for hygiene reasons so you could, this can either be um, short sleeves or you can just roll up your long sleeves but if you can't roll up your long sleeves you won't be allowed to wear it and you'll be told off. So these are the clothes that I took to placement. I took this shirt. Obviously I took more than just this but this is just an example. And pair of light chinos, um, skinny-ish skinny chinos are quite good I find because um, you can get away with not ironing them because obviously because they're skinny um, they'll stretch a little bit and stretch the creases out so you can get away, you can get away with not really ironing them. Um, shirts are a little bit harder to get away with because they tend to crease quite easily. And that brings me on to an iron. So an iron is probably a good idea. I mean you only really need one per flat so again communicate with your flatmates about um, an iron but you don't want to be going to placement in scruffy clothes. So the last little bits of clothes you need are things to keep you warm and dry. So I'd recommend getting a waterproof that you can pack up that looks like this. They don't look the nicest um, but no one really cares how you look and when you go inside for lectures or tutorials um, it's nice to be able to pack it up and slip it in your bag without taking up too much space and the same again with a coat or something else to keep you warm so like a puffy coat like this sort this sort of thing um, yeah like this sort of thing that you can wear underneath the waterproof on like, a cold rainy day that's always a good idea um, and if that if you can get that to pack away as well um, that's perfect and then it's also probably a good idea to take a hat and some gloves just for those really cold days so the last little section is just 
extra like random stuff that doesn't really fit into any other group. So the first thing on this list is some sort of computer. Um, I've got another video about um, which computer you should choose for uni, or I think it's medical school specifically, but yeah, which, which computer you should choose for uni if you haven't already got one, um, but you probably do need to bring one. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the bum having to go to use um, the uni's computers because um, they might not always be free, um, they can be really, really slow, and you can only then do work when you're actually on campus or in the library or computer rooms. You can't do it at home or in cafes or anywhere else. So yeah, get yourself a computer if you can. So walking around uni like to lectures and around campus and to and from your accommodation is not a very quick way of getting about. So I'd recommend getting a bike or skateboard or electric scooter or some way that's faster than walking of getting from A to B. I used a bike, I had one before I came to uni so that was fine. I know some people skateboarded, uh, some people still walked, um, which st did work fine for them, but I'd much rather have the extra 15 minutes in bed or 15 minutes extra like in the gym or in the pool before lectures in the morning. I'll link some good value um, ones down below. Obviously if you can't skateboard then don't get a skateboard. Um, or you could maybe learn over the summer, but that's up to you. The next thing is a rucksack to carry all of your stuff in. Um, so I recommend for this getting something which is has a nice breathable back and straps, because if you're walking fast to lectures or you're cycling, um, you don't want to be having like a sweaty back and it getting uncomfortable. And it's also probably a good idea that it's um, you get one that's quite sturdy and reasonably well made because if you're carrying a computer in it you don't want to be carrying a, a nice computer in a £15 backpack because if it breaks your computer's gone with it. Next are some noise cancelling headphones so you can work in cafes and pretty much wherever you want without being disturbed by noise. Uh, I'll link my, I'll link some good options down below. If you don't want to get noise cancelling headphones for whatever reason you can get a pair of little um, in earbuds. Uh, I'd rec recommend getting some wireless ones, like I got these for like £35 off Amazon. So you just, they're like, AirPo like, like AirPods, but not. Um, and they make a really nice seal around your ear, sort of in your ear. So, uh, so it sort of seals out most of the background noise. Next thing is a battery pack. So you don't want to get caught without any battery in your phone or your laptop at the end of the day. Um, so that's a good thing. So along with uh, keeping things charged, make sure to bring all of your chargers for everything you're going to bring. Um, some people forgot this, I don't know how some people forgot this, but people did. So bring all of your chargers and maybe a couple of spare cables. On the subject of electrical things, um, obviously not essential, but a Bluetooth speaker is something that is great. It will really make, it'll make your um, room and flat a much nicer place to be in for you and friends you want to have over. Um, and it's just quite a sociable thing to have. Um, so I got, I've had this one here, which I got off Amazon for like 35 pounds about, I don't know, it must be like five, six years ago now. Um, but that died, uh, but you can still get them really cheaply. Or I've got, I have this thing, pretty chunky one that I got for um, for Christmas this year. As I said, it's really not essential to have one, but um, if you can stretch to it, then it's a good idea. And the last thing is you need to make sure you bring any sports kit or um, like musical instruments or anything like that from home that you would ordinarily do or that you want to get into when you get to uni. So for me, I had to bring all my swimming kit, which took up quite a lot of space in my room. Um, people had to bring like guitars and uh, saxophones and that sort of thing. So um, I'm sure this isn't something you'd forget if you uh, if you already do it all the time, but it's just an extra little reminder. So yeah, I hope that video has uh, has helped you helped you work out what you need to buy for uni or take to uni if you've already got the stuff. So yeah, make sure you like and subscribe if you like this sort of video, and I'll see you in the next one. So once I filmed this video, I realised I'd left out a couple of things. So um, main things were uh, mugs and glass. I think I left out glasses.